Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. And in this video we're going to look at another example of a metric space, uh, which is um, discrete metric spaces. So um, this is really um, analogous to things like the trivial group, or, or uh, what other things, the trivial ring or the trivial field. Uh, these are, this is basically the most basic examples of metric spaces you can construct. And basically the way that you construct them is uh, you take any old set, so let x equal any set. Uh, so just take whatever set you like and I can put a discrete metric on it which will obey the axioms of a metric space. And the way that you do this is you define the distance between any two points x and y uh, to be equal to either 0 uh, if x is equal to y, or 1 if x is not equal to y. So, to give you an example of what this means, if I take a set um, big X, which is just going to be, let's have a set of three symbols, so uh, let it be the Greek letter phi, uh, the lowercase phi, and let's have F as well. Okay, uh, so we have three symbols here, uh, then what we do is uh, the distance function, remember, is strictly, it's a function which is going to map the Cartesian product of uh, x with itself, and it's going to map it onto, um, onto uh, the positive real numbers, so, uh, well, the non-negative real numbers, I should say, uh, 0 to infinity. Okay, uh, so if I firstly construct the Cartesian product of this uh, set, so if I construct the Cartesian product, uh, then basically I draw a table like this. Uh, so I have phi, uh, lowercase phi, and f, and I have phi, uh, lowercase phi, and f, and I can construct the Cartesian product. So phi phi, uh, capital phi, lowercase phi, capital phi, uh, lowercase f, uh, well, capital f, uh, lowercase phi, capital phi, uh, lowercase phi, lowercase phi, lowercase phi, capital F, capital F, capital phi, capital F, lowercase phi, and capital F, capital F. So I've constructed the Cartesian product. So the Cartesian product, x by x, is another set, and it's the set containing all of these uh, ordered pairs that I have uh, got here. So if I wanted to write it out, I would write it as the set uh, with all of these things in. So phi phi, um, phi lowercase phi, and etc. So you put all nine of them in there. Okay, uh, so now this distance function is uh, going to ascribe to each one of these uh, new elements here, it's going to ascribe uh, a number. And in this case, the way it's going to work is this one, this one, and this one are all going to be given the number zero because uh, in those two cases, the x and y's are equal to one another, so they are go all going to be ascribed zero. So it's going to go on to zero, zero, zero. Uh, so this is the distance function here, if I just put a little arrow to show what we're doing. Uh, and uh, these ones, uh, where uh, the two things in the ordered pair are not equal to each other, will all be ascribed to the number 1. So if I fill in that, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So basically, the distance function is going to ascribe to each one of these uh, the corresponding number in this table. So that's what the uh, Cartesian, uh, what the uh, well, this is the Cartesian product of uh, the set X with itself, and this is what the distance function is going to look like. So it's going to ascribe this one zero, it's going to ascribe this one one, it's going to ascribe this one zero, this one one, etc. And if you had a bigger set, so uh, this was just an arbitrary set, you can uh, take whatever set you want. If you if you had a bigger set, you can imagine that the pattern is going to continue i.e. the diagonal elements are going to be zero, as uh, so if I do it in a different colour, let's say red, uh, let's hope this pen works, yep, uh, so if I do it in, uh, it will continue on and you'll get uh, the diagonal elements all zero and the off diagonal elements are all going to be ones and it will continue on for however many elements you have. Okay, uh, and uh, this is, this is you don't just need to be able to, it, it, you can't, you can do this on any set. Uh, it doesn't need to be a finite set. Obviously, if you want to be able to draw out this uh, Cartesian product and uh, the uh, corresponding map, uh, then it's going to need to be a finite set, but it can be countably infinite, it can be uncountably infinite, it's still perfectly well defined. Uh, so let's see why this is a metric space. Let's see that, that um, uh, a set with, these, with this sort of a metric ascribed on it, a discrete metric, uh, let, let's see that this set, along with the metric, is a metric space. 
Okay, so let's check that it obeys all of the axioms of a metric space. Okay, so up we go. Uh, so the first axiom uh, was that uh, the distance function um, is uh, the distance between two points x and y is going to be an element of the non-negative real numbers. Okay, so let's check that one. Well, that's pretty obvious because it's either going to be equal to zero, uh, the distance is going to be zero if they're the same, or it's going to be one if they're not the same. So yes, 0 and 1 are both elements of the non-negative uh, real numbers. So that one's done. Then we want to check that if the, dis if the two points are equal to one another, then the distance is equal to zero. Well, that's just in the definition. Uh, the definition of uh, in the definition of the this metric, the uh, distance between two points was equal to zero if the two points were equal to uh, if the two points were what uh, were the same. Okay. Uh, and similarly, if the distance between x y is equal to zero, uh, we want to know that x is equal to y. We want that to imply that x is in fact equal to y. And that again comes straight from the definition because if the two points uh, proved by contradiction, if x x was not equal to y, then the distance would be equal to 1. The only way in which the distance can be equal to 0 is if the two points are equal to one another. So axiom 2 is satisfied. Okay, axiom 3 then, uh, that the distance between x and y needs to be equal to the distance between y and x. Well, okay, so uh, there's two cases here. Either uh, x and y are the same point, in which case the distance is equal to 0, uh, if, if x and y are the same point x is equal to y, and then uh, if we look at distance between y and x, uh, then y and x are still the same point, so this is in also going to be equal to zero, uh, so basically uh, that uh, follows instantly, okay, uh, or if the x and y are not equal to the same point, so x is not equal to y, uh, then uh, the distance between x and y is equal to one, so if uh, the, if the uh, ordered pair is one of the off-diagonal uh, components, then if we flip it over, if we take the distance between y and x, uh, that just corresponds to going from, say, this one uh, to this one. So it corresponds to uh, reflecting yourself in the diagonal line, and of course your distance is just going to be 1 over here as well. So indeed the distance between y and x is going to be equal to the distance between x and y, and that's more or less obvious by drawing out this table because it's clearly symmetrical in the diagonal line, uh, which is what this property means. Okay, uh, so the final property, and usually the non-trivial one to check, uh, the triangle inequality, so 4. Okay, uh, so we know that the, there are lots of different cases for here, so let's say what we are trying to show. We're trying to show uh, that uh, let z be another element of the, of the set, then the distance between x and y uh, is less than or equal to the distance between uh, x and z plus the distance between uh, z and y. So let's firstly start off with the case that x is in fact equal to y. Uh, then the distance between x and y is equal to zero. Now, if the distance between x and y is equal to zero, these two numbers here can only uh, be zero or one. So whatever they are, you're always going to have something that is greater than or equal to zero. So basically, this is either this could be equal to zero or one and this could be equal to 0 or 1. So the worst possible scenario is that when you, they're both equal to 0, and then uh, you've got, when you add them together, you get something else that's equal to 0, but then it's still greater than or equal to 0. In this case, it would be equal to 0. Uh, so this inequality is always going to hold true for whatever combination of 0 and 1s you have there. So if x is equal to y, the triangle inequality holds instantly. So let's say x is not equal to y, then the distance between x and y is actually equal to 1. Uh, and basically, if we let now let z be some arbitrary other point, uh, then again, uh, we have the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. And we want to make sure that this inequality holds. Well, uh, worst possible scenario is that z is either equal to x or z is equal to y. Firstly, well, let's do it by case by case. So if z is not equal to x, so not equal to x, and z is not equal to y, uh, then that implies that the distance between x and z is equal to 1, and the distance between z and y is equal to 1. So the triangle inequality certainly holds in that case. Now let's say z is equal to x, and z is not equal, and z is therefore not equal to y, uh, which is the equivalent case that z is not equal to x, but z is equal to y. Basically, I'm just saying that let's take the case that one of the, that z is equal to one of them. Now, z cannot be equal to both of them because x is not equal to y. So if z was equal to both of them, uh, then uh, 
that both of them would be equal to one another. So this is just the case where z is equal to one of them. That implies that either the distance between x and z is equal to zero, or the distance between z and y is equal to zero. But uh, the other one, uh, so one of them is equal to zero, but the other one is forced to be equal to one, uh, because if one is equal, then the other is not. So uh, the worst possible scenario is that on this side, you're going to have something that adds up to one, so you'll get that one is equal to one. So basically, the triangle inequality does hold true for every single case that you can think of. So the distance between x and y is indeed less than or equal to the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. Uh, so indeed, uh, this uh, metric uh, does satisfy the triangle inequality. So uh, that is the discrete metric. You can put it on any set you want and create a uh, metric space. So there is a bunch of metric spaces that you can easily create.